Hi everyone, I am Rebecca, the insurance lady, and thank you for joining. I'm going to discuss the standard fire policy as an introduction to dwelling policies as well as home insurance. All of the information you'll receive in this lecture is based on industry standards for most state exams. Please check your state specifics if there are any adjustments for your state as far as percentage coverages. So before I go over the dwelling policy, I want to touch base on the standard fire policy. This is a basic fire insurance policy. Fire insurance is just another name for property insurance. A bit of history before we get into fire insurance policies. The very first fire insurance policy and the foundation of fire insurance policy started in 1943. It was first used in New York and adopted the name of the New York Standard 165 Lime Fire Policy. It's important to know about this before learning the dwelling and the homeowner's policies because essentially this policy is used as the foundation to other properties uh, policy such as the dwelling and homeowners. So you might not get a question about the standard fire policy on your test, but it will help you to better understand the dwelling and the home. Now on a standard fire policy, there are four parts. You have your declarations, your insuring agreement, your conditions, and your exclusions. That's DICE. If you want to remember that, you can abbreviate it as DICE. If you're not familiar with the parts of a policy, check out my free YouTube lecture on you, the YouTube page and please go over it because it will definitely help you. So a standard fire policy is a pretty basic policy. There are three things that are covered in this type of policy and that's fire, lightning, and the peril of removal. There are aren't a lot of perils covered and there aren't a lot of exclusions, but it's pretty specific. The exclusions include war, neglect, and theft. So an example is if there was a fire because of a war, then there would be no coverage under the basic fire policy since war is listed as an exclusion. Make sense? Now this is just a basic fire policy. The dwelling policy is going to have more perils and more exclusions. Let me go over the three covered perils in a little more detail starting with the first and that's fire. So fire is a rapid oxidation accompanied by a flame, spark, or glow. It must also be sudden and unexpected, not a long-term predictable process such as scorching. A fire has to be hostile. If it's not a hostile fire and it's less than that, it would be considered a friendly fire. So a friendly fire is one that is contained in the place intended for. So example of an, a friendly fire would be a fire in your fireplace or a fire on a wood burning stove. Those are friendly fires because that is where the fire was intended to be. Now, once the fire gets out of control and it's it's moved past where it was intended to be and it starts causing damage, then that would be considered a hostile fire, one that has spread beyond its intended place. So only direct damage caused by a hostile fire, including smoke from a hostile fire, is going to be covered by the fire or by the peril of fire. Then you have the next peril, which is lightning. Lightning is electric electricity atmospherically produced by nature. It is not artificial electrical currents. It has to be, lightning has to be produced by nature. It's going to, lightning typically will cause fire or damage your home in certain ways. And if that is what causes damage, then that would be covered under the peril of lightning. Then you have the peril of removal. So, the peril of removal is an all-risk coverage. If during a fire, you remove your contents from the home in order to save them from damage of the fire, and your contents get damaged outside of the home, the contents are covered. So, so basically, if you remove your personal property from your home because they're being threatened by a peril that is covered, 
under the policy in this case it's going to be fire right and those items are damaged outside of the home because of another reason it could be um, covered under this peril of removal if i took my my couch out if i was able to get get my couch out of the home and saved it from being um, damaged by fire and then all of a sudden the firemen come and run over my couch that will be an example of coverage under the peril of removal the couch is covered now that it's it's um, been protected because I me removed it to try to protect it so that was just a quick overview on the standard fire policy which I think is important to know before getting into dwelling policies so thank you for viewing. Please subscribe if you want to see upcoming videos. If you're looking for study material, please click on the link below for Kaplan products. I am par partnered with Kaplan and the link will give you some discounts on study materials. Thanks again. My name is Rebecca and I am your insurance lady.